Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to be talking about solving multi-step equations but this time they'll have variables on both sides. And these five steps here um, general uh, general guidelines for solving um, most problems particularly with these types the step two simplifying combining like terms getting all the variables to one side of an equation and then numbers to the other that's what step two is about then once again we see what's happening to the variable we undo what we see and we check the answer if unsure let's try this out notice variables are on both sides here we have 4x plus 3 equals 12 plus 4x I'm going to first distribute that 4 and get 4x plus 12 equal to 12 plus 4x. Now if you notice, both sides are actually the same. Let's kind of see what happens here. Let's take away the 12, take away the 12. That's going to give us 0, which is just 4x equal to 4x. And then we need to get all the variables to one side, so we're going to take away 4x from both sides. Notice what happens. Everything eliminates. We are actually left with 0 equal to 0. When this happens, this is a special scenario, when everything cancels out and you get 0 equals 0, uh, the answer to this is x equals all real numbers. Or infinite solutions. So x equals all real numbers. This turns out that this is um, a type of problem where no matter what you plug in for x, it will always make the equation true. So x could be anything. x could be 1, x could be 2, x could be 3, and it's going to make the equation true every time. So when this happens, when everything cancels out and you get 0 equals 0, say x equals all real numbers or infinite solutions. All right, let's look at another one here and see what happens. See if this hat weird thing happens again. All right, this time it's one third 21 minus 3g equals 6 minus g. We're going to distribute this one third to both sides. One third of 21 is 7. One third of 3 is 1. So we have 7 minus 1g equals 6 minus g. All right, uh, let's try to get all the numbers together by taking away 6 from both sides. Taking away 6, and then those what we have 1 minus, I'm just going to write it as g, equals g, and then equals a negative g, because remember the negative sign here brings down. We need to add the g's, g, get g the other side, plus g here and plus g here. Look what happens on this one. We're left with 1. And then we equal 0. So everything canceled out except we're left with a math statement where one number is equal to a different number. 1 equals 0. That is not true. That is not true. What happens here? We say no solution or no solutions. No solutions. Everything canceled out. It doesn't matter what we substitute in for g. If we were to go back up here and put a 0, put a 1, put any number then the equation would never be true. This is a weird equation that actually has no solution. All right, and notice we had a false statement at the end. Whenever you end up with a false statement, you know you have no solution. Hopefully the next ones will work. Let's see what happens here. Okay, look, we have four, 7r equals 4r plus 27. Okay, we're going to take away, get all the r's to one side. Let's take away the 4r. All right, and 7r minus 4r is 3r. We get 3r equals 27. Here's our variable r. It's being multiplied by 3. We're going to do the opposite. We're going to divide by 3. We're going to keep the equation balanced, though. Keep the equation balanced. And looks like r is going to equal 9. So here's one that actually worked. We had variables on both sides. r end up being 9. All right, let's look at another one here. Um, this one, 6w minus 2 over 4 equals w minus 2. Let's rewrite this so we can see the rational um, part of it. Part on the left side sort of looks like a fraction. All right. Um, now, what to do first? Um, we can get rid of this fraction here by multiplying both sides of the equation by 4. Okay, and doing that, it gets rid of the fraction part. But if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. i got to multiply these things over here by 4. So look what's going to happen. The 4s here cancel out, leaving me with 
w minus 2, and that was the result of the 4s canceling out. We have to distribute the 4 over here, 4 times w, 4w, 2 times 4 is 8, so we have that negative 8. Now notice that we have equation with variables on both sides, so the goal now is to combine like terms, get the w's to one side, numbers to the other. Let's take away 4w from both sides, take away 4w from both sides. Look what we have left, negative 8 on the right. On the left, we have 2w minus 2. All right, next step is add 2 to both sides, add 2 to both sides, and then 2w equals negative 6. All right, I'm going to rewrite this up here so we can see it a little better. 2w equals negative 6. w is now being multiplied by 2. Let's do the opposite of multiply. Let's divide. And then we get an answer of w equals negative 3. All right, so quite a few steps in that one. Um, if you want to check, you can always take your answer and substitute it back into the original equation for w. All right, let's go one more. I think this one's going to be a little bit lengthy. Uh, we got lots of steps here. We got fractions even. All right, first thing we're going to do is take the 7 eighths and distribute it to the negative 32 and then negative 48. 7 eighths of 32. Well, the 32 divides by 8, leaving us with 4. 4 times 7, negative 28. 7 eighths of negative 48. Well, 48 divided by this 8 here is going to give me 6. 6 times the 7, 42. We have 42p. Notice the 42p. We're adding 36. That's the left side of the equation. Now we're going to simplify the right side. We're going to take 2 thirds of negative 33. 2 thirds of negative 33 is negative 22. Negative 22p. 2 thirds of 18 is 12. Uh, yeah, this should be a minus sign here, not an equal sign. Let's just make it thicker. There's a 12, and then minus 10p. All right, next up is combining the like terms, okay? The 20, negative 28 and the positive 36 comes together, and that gives us a... I believe a positive 8. 36 minus 28 is a positive 8. Uh, let's look at the right side of the equation. We have a negative 22p. We have a negative 10p. That comes together to give us negative 32p. So at this step, I'm just combining like terms. On the left side, I still have negative 42p untouched. On the right side, I still have that negative 12 untouched. All right, let's get all the p's together. Let's... Uh, let's do this. Let's add 42p to both sides. And if I have a negative 32, a positive 42, I'm going to get a positive 10p. Uh, next up, I need to get the numbers to one side. Let's add the 12. Let's add 12. 12 on both sides, keeping the equation balanced. 8 and 12 makes 20. And then that's equal to 10p. Now we can, you might be able to solve this in your head. 10 times what number is 20? And that number should be 2. But let's show the work here. Let me write it over here just so I can see the steps. 20 equals 10p. We're going to divide both sides by 10. And we can see right here 20 divided by 10 is 2. And that's what our unknown variable p is. A lot of steps here. Keep on problems like this, go slow. Keep track of what you distribute. I know we have fractions on this one. Combine your like terms. Then once you get um, everything simplified down after that step two, look at the variable, see what's being done. Undo what you see. Notice we added the 12, added the 12 divided by 10, divided by 10, and then you'll arrive at your answer. Hope this video helps. Thank you for watching.